Hello, everybody. This is the third time uh, trying to get this going. Um, I, th I think we found the problem. I think it was a connection issue um, where it was partially connected. And so it was going in and going out and it was killing the feed. I think we have it set and straight. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do this again. I want to, again, iterate for those who was were watching the initial two attempts to stream you've heard this already but i'm going to say it again because it's so important uh, i emphasize with my clients and with anyone who comes to me for guidance or advice that it's so important that you start your day with gratitude it's so important that you wake up and immediately establish a mindset and a heart so a conscious state of gratitude and a subconscious state of gratitude hello Kim a constant state of gratitude and this 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 mindset has to be consistent because this state of gratitude is what's going to provide your stability throughout the day and throughout life because life is shifting your day is shifting your day is not going to be all great grand and everything falls into line that's not life that's not how life works life actually moves and ebbs and flows ups and downs ins and out challenges and rewards that's how life happens and if you are riding with the ebbs and flows of your life you will live a very highly capricious state of existence where your moods and your state of mind is flowing with how your circumstances are flowing you have to be in a state of mind and gratitude and thankfulness and awareness of who you are despite where you're at so that you can develop and sustain a stability a state of stable stableness that allows you to continuously move and have a fixed state of existence there's nothing more frustrating than allowing yourself to be shifted in your attitude and in your moods and in, in your thoughts and thinkings and perceptions of life based off where you're at and what you're going through because it's going to happen you're going to have these moments sometimes these moments turn into periods and you still have to be able to wake up and find a reason to be grateful there's always something in your life that's worth being grateful for the thing is are you going to focus on the situation or are you going to focus on the fact that you have a reason to be grateful the fact that no matter what you're going through and what you're facing you're capable of getting through it you're built for the battle you're built for whatever you're going through and you will get through it that's the thing but i'm a firm believer in how you start your day is how you're in your day you win the first hour you win the day not because you're going to circumvent everything not because thinking a certain way removes the challenges of life no thinking a certain way prepares you to take on the challenges of life thinking a certain way doesn't allow your mood to start shifting your energy your frequency and your vibration so that more negative stuff happens if you allow something negative to shift your mood something negative to shift your frequency something negative to take you to a place where you're expecting something else negative you're going to get it so you've got to be able to sit up and say, shoot, I'm built for this. I'm going to take this thing on. I'm going to literally uh, go at this. I have the solutions. The answers are on their way to me. The answers are a part of my connection to the mind of God. And I have the mind of God in me. And so the answers are always coming. There's nothing that I'm going to face that there is not a solution to and a means through which I can not only survive it, but thrive in it and win. It's not about ease. It's about reward. It's not about me circumventing problems, getting around the vicissitudes of life and shaking everything and just having this unbelievably 
uh, problem-free life. It's about sitting up and saying, you know what, I'm built for this. It's I'm going to take it on. I'm going to win. Oh, this is going to be a great day. Whatever challenge comes my way, it's not really a challenge. It's an illusion because the reason it's an illusion is because I already have the answer. Uh, the last uh, formulated idea that I have in my morning meditation every morning is no matter what obstacle or undesirable circumstance crosses my path, I refuse to accept it. For it is nothing but an illusion that can be no obstacle or undesirable circumstance to the mind of God, which is in me, around me, and serves me now. That is the way that I end. And then I followed up with, I am um, committed to excellence. I'm adequately sufficient to meet every challenge and then some personal declarations about myself. But that mindset right there, there is no obstacle or undesirable circumstance to the mind of God. And the mind of God is in me, around me, and serves me now. So I want you uh, to really and truly think about that. Again, as I get ready to move into what I want to talk to you about today, I want you to also be aware of the fact that uh, there are plenty of resources in the description box, uh, new books, uh, new links, uh, new programs. Uh, if you want to work directly with me in a one-on-one -on -one capacity, um, you can reach out to me directly or reach out to the support team uh, via email. Uh, shoot me an inbox, whatever, and initiate the process, and we could talk about what it takes to work with me directly. We got that out of the way. So I want to talk to you about something. Now, the title may be a little misleading because it says that it talks about the measure of the man. Uh, the reason I put the measure of the man in there is because the idea and the thought comes from the book, The Measure of a Man, written by Sidney Portier. But the idea and thought applies equally to male and female. And so I want you to really sit out and truly think about what I am sharing with you because if you can gain this, if you can wrap your mind around it, there's some power to it. There is the ability to actually take on life and do something and have a place in life that's your place, the place that you were designed to feel, not what someone else has you to feel. And I want you to really, really, truly pay attention to this. Okay, now... In his book, The Measure of the Man, uh, simply Sidney Poitier talks about something. He says, there's this unspoken reality that takes place when you go walking with someone. He says, the moment you go walking with someone, there's this unspoken agreement between the two of you. And that unspoken agreement is that either you are going to adjust to their pace or they're going to adjust to yours. And the question that I have is, Whose pace have you adjusted to see? One thing that I was taught early in life by my um, my uh, 11th grade English teacher was that association brings about assimilation. She was very, very adamant about me being selective about the people that I hung out with and I spent time with. She would pull me to the side and she would say, son, there are some things in you that you have to nurture and you've got to be careful about who you hang out, hang around with. Association brings about assimilation. What was she saying? She said, if you spend enough time around someone, you start to act like them. You start to take on their mindset. Um, even in the Bible, the apostle Paul turns around and he, he, he says, um, quoting Euripides, the Greek philosopher, he says that do not be deceived, evil company corrupts good habits. What is he saying? Association brings about assimilation that when you walk with someone long enough, either they're going to adjust to your pace or you're going to adjust to theirs. My question again to you is whose pace are you adjusting to? Uh, are you adjusting to the pace of someone who's, who has, through their actions, treated you in a certain way that suggests that you are not capable of being or doing the thing? that you suggest that you want to do in your life? Are you walking at the pace of someone who has already given up on their dreams? Are you walking at the pace of someone who has a negative mindset and can only see the negative aspects of life? Are you walking at the pace of someone who wants to keep you in a box in which they think all you're capable of doing is put ever and fill in whatever you want to fill in there? Or are you walking at a pace that is conducive to you achieving the things in your life that deep down inside of your heart you know you want to achieve? The question is, whose pace are you walking at? Are you, are you walking at? Think about it. Anytime you go walking with someone, 
No one says, okay, we're going to walk at this speed. You start walking and either someone slows down and that person slows down to walk with them or somebody's walking fast and the, uh, another, the other person speeds up to keep up. But you're walking at the pace of one another through an unspoken agreement. And that happens when you associate yourself with people that are not walking at the pace you're walking at and are walking and walking slower. Are you walking with someone that's going to pull you along or are you walking with someone that's holding you back? That's the question. You need to stop associating yourself with negative people. You need to stop associating with yourself with people who cannot see the greatness in you. You need to stop associating yourself with people who can only find that, you know, there are actually people out there who literally make it a, who have made it their careers to tell you why you can't be something, why you can't achieve something, why you're going to fail at something. There are literally people out there that will sit up and make it their life's work to tell other people why they are not going to get something done that they want to do. They are miserable. They haven't accomplished anything and they view everybody through the lens of their own failures and they will sit up and attack and um, misjudge, misassess, and constantly pump negativity towards you, and they will pull your frequency out of whack, they will drive your vibrations down, and you will find yourself walking in the mire of negativity and wondering how you got there, trying to figure out how you're gonna get out, and realizing there's nothing but negativity around you because energy is drawn to, like energy Ener energy resonates with like energy you've literally got to get to a point where you are surrounding yourself with people who see the greatness in you you're surrounding yourself with people who will raise uh, your expectations who will lift you who will speak power and positivity into your life it is absolutely imperative that you monitor the people in your periphery monitor the people monitor the people who are speaking constantly into your life this is not in any in any way shape or form suggesting that you only get into a yes crowd where everybody is yes 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 and never tell you when you're wrong this is not about giving up accountability i'm not saying but see the thing is the true people who are truly critiquing you because they want you to be better you'll notice something about their critiques while they'll tell you when they think you're wrong they're going to remind you of how great they think you are they're going to tell you hey i don't think what you're doing right now is really what you should be doing based off of where you're trying to go but i think you're awesome i think you're great i think that everything it's going to line up for you, but I just think right now what you're doing isn't what you should be doing. That is different than someone saying, you, you know you can't do that. Remember when you did this and it didn't work? Why are you thinking that? You need to really be trying that. You're not even good at that. You know, I mean, and, and it's always something tearing you down, never anything be, building you up. The person who really cares about you will critique you. They'll tell you when they think you're off your game. They'll tell you when they think you're making a bad decision. They'll tell you that because it's their responsibility out of love to be a, to hold you accountable. But they're always going to tell you after they tell you what they think wrong. They're going to tell you all the things they think right about you. It's just they, they admire you. They look at you. They want you to fulfill your full potential. So they challenge you. That's the beautiful thing about this thing is that you need to be walking at the pace of someone who's going to get you to your destiny on time. That's the thing I want you to understand. You got to get from underneath the labels of some of these negative people. Some of these people have told you you're not smart enough. Some of these people told you that you don't, you're not strong enough. Some of these people have told you that you don't come from the right background. Some of these people are reminding you of where, where you grew up at and what kind of grades you got in school and all of this stuff like this. And they don't see the potential that you have to be something exceptional, someone extraordinary, someone phenomenal. They have just completely lost sight of that. That's the thing that you've got to be aware of. That's the thing you've got to understand. you got to get from underneath these level. you got to start living. Here's the thing, and I'm going to leave you at this. There's so much that I want to share with you, but I'm going to bring it back to you either tomorrow or Thursday, a, a, a combination of the above. I'm, I'm, but I, here's the thing I want to share with you. You've got to start living through your imagination versus living from the memories of your past. See, 
when you start living from the memories of your past, when you start setting your expectations, when you start perceiving the possibilities of your life and you're looking only through the lens of your past and you're viewing it, engaging it and setting your expectations based off of your memories, you have a limitation based off of what you've been through. You can never set a goal higher than what you've experienced because you're living through your memories. You've got to unleash your imagination to be able to see things you've never done before see things you never experienced before have things you never had before you got to be able to see it the imagination is the catalyst of invention we've got all these things now think about it that was a time if you'd have told a person that 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 you could pick up this thing and you could dial some numbers and you can actually talk to somebody in an entirely different state or country they'd have told you you were crazy and that was back when we were talking about doing it with telephone lines and wires everywhere there's all this stuff that and you said no and then we we got it we did it we did the home line the landline you had to call initially and talk to an operator and they connected the phone call but you could literally talk to somebody in another city but then what happened they said we can do better than that we can make it wireless we can make it cellular we can make it we can literally sit up and give you a device that's not connected to anything and you can pick it up and you can dial a number and you can talk to somebody hell you could either sit up there now and facetime literally get on a video conference with somebody miles away the very technology that I'm using to talk to you now if you'd have told somebody that 40 years ago 60 years ago they would have said you were crazy but somebody had an imagination that stepped outside of the boundaries of what was uh, believable at the moment what was acceptable at the moment what was considered possible at the moment and sit up and said I can do it and now you have something that you don't even think twice about. You do it so because think about it. You know how many people must have thought Orville, Orville and Wilbur Wright were crazy when they said they were going to create a machine that will allow us to fly in the air? You know how many people told them they had lost their minds? People don't fly. Birds fly. They, they kept going. They failed over and over again. But eventually they got the understandings of aerodynamics and the understanding of propulsion and they started to get it together and now we jump on airplanes without even thinking we've got a multi-ton machine made out of metal with 200 or more people on it weighing a hundred and something pounds on average on there so you're talking tons of weight flying through the air and nobody's even thinking about it. But that's because Orville and Wilbur Wright decided that they were going to step outside of the box of impossibility and do something that their imagination told them they could. Your imagination is where it begins. Stop letting people put labels on you. Stop living your life based off of your past experiences. You can own, When you do that, you limit yourself to what you've already been through and nothing more. You've got to come out of the past, be able to create in your mind something that hasn't happened yet believe it enough and visit it enough look at it enough dream about it enough to it becomes imprinted on your brain and then you will automatically start to work toward it you cannot get caught up in where you are and where you come from so much that you never get, never go anywhere but i go back every now and then to the hood i grew up in and there are still people there 40 years later still there and it's like, why? Because they never saw themselves outside of the community. They were never able to visualize anything but what they had already experienced. It's the people that can envision themselves doing something more, doing something better, going further in doing that are able to accomplish it. So that's my challenge to you. Stop living through the past. Stop walking with people who are killing your pace. Walk with people who challenge your pace. Walk with people who are going to make you pick up the pace. Walk with people who are going to sit up and say, that's not how we're going to do it. We're going to do it the right way. We're going to, we're going to strive for excellence. We're going to do things in a way that we can be proud of the work that we have, the finished product. That's my challenge to you. That is my challenge to you is that you live up to the level of the potential of your design. Live at the level of the potential of your design. Not where you come from, not what you've been through, but what your design says you're capable of. 
That's my challenge to you. I am telling you that there's absolutely nothing that can be withheld from you, nothing impossible. Think about all the things that were impossible that people have done now. One last uh, example, and then I'm done. Before 1954, it was believed that no human could possibly run the mile in under four minutes. That was this thing called the four minute barrier. Nobody could run the mile under four minutes. Not, they believed it was physically impossible for a human to run the mile in under four minutes. But to double down on that belief, this is what they did. They sit up and said, even if you were able to some kind of way get your body to run the mile in four minutes, you wouldn't live long enough to celebrate it because you would die because your heart would explode. Now, this was up until 1954. All these athletes that existed since before 1954, nobody had run the mile in under four minutes, at least nobody that had been clocked running the mile. And so all of a sudden, Roger Bannister decided that he was going to be the person that was going to be the first person to run the mile and that he wasn't going to die, that he was going to run the mile. Now, here's the crazy thing. I want you to really pay attention to the power of beliefs. Roger Bannister decided it. So he got out there, and the day that he decided he was going to do it, he ran the mile in under four minutes. And then they asked him, the first thing they asked him was, how did you train in order to do that? He said, I didn't change my physical training. He said, what I did is I did it a thousand times in my mind until I believed I had already done it. Check that out. He did it a thousand times in his mind. That's the beautiful thing about the subconscious mind. When you invent, when you introduce your imagination to it, it can't tell the difference between what's real and what you're imagining. So when you imagine something to the mind, the mind believes you're doing it. And if you do it enough in your mind, your mind thinks you're an expert at it. Even though you've never actually physically done it, the mind doesn't know. That's the power of the imagination. And we've got to stop killing the imagination of our children by telling them they're dreaming. Get their heads out of the clouds. Stop thinking, you can't do that. You Stop trying to squeeze our kids in the boxes somebody else created. Let them have that imagination because that imagination sets the boundaries of how they're going to experience life. But that ain't even the biggest thing about what Roger Bannister did. Up until 1954, nobody had run the mile in, in under... Uh, four minutes. Within the first two years, 2,000 people had did it. By 1971, 20,000 people had done it. Now we got it to where high school kids do it. But it was impossible in 1954. Don't tell me about what's impossible. Tell me about what you're what what idea or thought you're going to shatter. On that note, I'm gonna get off of here. Look, like I said. Check out some of the new books. If, if you want to work with yours truly, I have a few slots available. Uh, reach out to me. Uh, we're doing some great work. Uh, I would love to work with you. But whatever you do, get from underneath the labels that other people put on your back and start living life at the level of your design. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.
of from a conceptual uh, perspective. People talk about it. All of the elements.